In Season 1, Rayla initially tells Callum her parents are dead, but she later amends that statement. They're not actually dead, she just wishes they were, because she feels they betrayed her and they betrayed the whole of Zadia. She believes they betrayed the Dragon Egg by abandoning their post. The reality is quite different. Her parents were the only ones who stayed to protect the Egg when Viren tried to destroy it. Instead, they tried to fight him at first, but he easily overpowered them. Rayla's mother, Teodrin, manages to convince Viren to not destroy it, arguing that he could use it to become even more powerful. Lane, Rayla's father, doesn't understand what his wife is doing, but her quick thinking saves the egg. However, this is the last we see of them. The dominant fan theory is that Viren turned them into coins he keeps in his collection. I see no reason to doubt this theory, especially since Season 3 of The Dragon Prince seems to go out of its way to confirm it. Honestly, I would be more surprised if this wasn't the case. But what does this mean? Her parents are in the coins, so what? Honestly, it would have been really interesting if she met her parents while not knowing the truth about them. There would have been conflict there. True, it would have been resolved relatively quickly, as her parents would have explained the truth, and Rayla would have accepted it, but it would have been conflict nonetheless. However, I like that Rayla knows the truth. Her entire worldview at the start of the series was based on the idea that her parents are traitors and cowards, and that she needed to redeem them. And now that she knows that this was false, that her parents were actually brave, and they actually defended the Dragon Egg, she's free to choose her own path. She's not burdened by the idea that she needs to redeem them. She doesn't feel like she needs to reckon with their sins. However, if this is the only dramatic utility Rayla's parents bring to the series, I would be a little disappointed. From what we have seen, they are interesting characters, and I want to know more about them. Thankfully, I think I'm going to get this opportunity. Mark my words, Rayla is going to meet her parents at some point in the story. It makes absolutely no narrative sense to spend so much time discussing her parents and then not have them appear in the present day at any point in the story. Now, there are several ways Rayla's parents could factor into the main narrative of the Dragon Prince without them needing to be released from their coins. And yes, I am, to make everything perfectly clear, going with the theory that they are trapped in the coins. What would be interesting is if Viren reveals that her parents are in the coins, then attempts to use this as leverage against Rayla. We already know Rayla is exceedingly self-sacrificing. As Callum declares, Rayla is a hero, and one of the most traditional heroic traits is the willingness to sacrifice oneself for the benefit of one's fellows. She constantly proves herself willing to put herself in harm's way in order to protect those around her, even when Callum doesn't want her to. So what happens if Viren gives her the opportunity to sacrifice herself to free her parents? It's a moral quandary. I'm sure Callum would tell her to not sacrifice herself. I don't see how or why he would act otherwise. He is in love with her, after all. However, as far as what she would do, I'm not sure. And I can't quite see Viren's prerogative for making this deal to her. Rayla is ferocious to those she opposes, yes, but would Viren think of her as less of a threat than her parents? Then again, maybe he would. Remember the flashbacks in Season 3? Viren was able to defeat Rayla's parents fairly easily. However, Rayla herself was able to kill Viren. If Claudia did not raise him from the dead, 
he would not be around to fear or oppose anyone. So maybe it is possible that he fears Rayla more than he fears Rayla's parents. But anyway, if he does offer her that choice, I don't think it is completely inconceivable to suggest that Rayla would take that choice. She loves her parents deeply, and she probably feels terrible for believing they were traitors. If she could do anything to bring them back from the coins, she probably would. Also, if she enters one of Viren's coins, that would create a lot of drama. Someone would have to try to save her. It would probably be Callum, among others. But I have to say, I'm not sure I want him to succeed. That's not to say I don't like Callum, I really do like him as a character. It's just that the brave protagonist having to save the girl he loves from captivity is a trope so worn it probably has holes in it. Maybe Rayla frees herself with her cleverness and quick thinking. Or maybe they work together to free her. Either way, I can imagine it working dramatically if they know what they're doing and don't rely on stale tropes. That said, the moment I'm waiting for is when both Rayla and her parents are free. I don't know exactly what she would say to them. Runan and Athari did more to raise her. Still, they're her parents. I can't imagine she would be less than overjoyed to see them. However, how she would express her feelings is a more complicated question. As demonstrated in episode 304, Rayla is not particularly adept at expressing her emotions. Callum asks her to share her feelings with him so they can work through her problems together, but she is not interested. She'd prefer to keep her grief and sorrow bottled up inside, even though that approach has negative consequences on her mental state. However, she does manage to finally open up to Callum, and as she does so, she admits her romantic feelings for him. I can see something similar happening with her and her parents. At first, she is reluctant to open up to them, but eventually she finally breaks down and admits how much she cares about them and how happy she is to see them. Hopefully, at this point, we get to see their personalities. We get to know what they're like. From what we've seen thus far, they are a lot like Rayla. They're strong and determined, even compared to those around them. They're willing to put themselves at risk in order to advance what they believe to be a greater cause, even if it means hurting those closest to them. Rayla, in the case of Rayla's parents, and Callum in the case of Rayla. We also know a little more about them. Teodrin seems to be the smarter one, or at least the more cunning one, compared to Lane, although it could just be the case that Lane was not thinking particularly clearly because he was so caught up in the chaos of the moment. Also, and this is a completely shallow observation, but they are two very good-looking people, if Rayla, when she grows up, looks anything like them, Callum is probably one of the luckiest people in this show. <laughs> but speaking of Callum, I wonder how her parents would react to seeing Rayla be in a relationship with him. I would like to think that they would be open-minded, but elves and humans have been enemies for so long that it is not hard to think that they would be skeptical, at least, to their daughter being in a romantic relationship with a human being. Of course, it's possible that they're fine with it, and that it's Runan, who is alive and also trapped in one of Viren's coins, is the one who would have a problem with her being in a relationship with a human. It's not impossible, and it would make for an interesting dynamic, considering how anti-human Runan has been in the past. Or maybe Rayla's mother is more accepting of humans, while Rayla's father despises them and the show derives conflict from that. Regardless of the specifics, I find the possibility of Rayla's parents distrusting humans to be ridiculously high. If they were just normal elves, it would be possible, though unlikely, for them to be more accepting of humans, but they're not. They are elves who were willing to risk their lives 
to stop humans from destroying the Dragon Egg. They were there to protect the Arch Dragon Thunder, Avizandium, and his family. If there are any elves who are almost guaranteed to have a dislike of humans, it's them. It's possible that they could surprise us by having a hidden level of sympathy for humans, just like Rayla does, but it's unlikely. And besides, the whole idea of the overprotective parents, who are distrustful of their daughter dating a guy who is in some way other, is a commonly used device for generating conflict and for good reason. Prejudices can be at their strongest when they cloak themselves in the guise of helping the prejudiced person ostensibly protect someone they care about. It would be cripplingly sad if Rayla reunites with her parents, looking into their eyes for the first time in way too long, and they're overjoyed at first, only for that joy to fade when they realize that she's in a relationship with a human. Of course, Rayla could keep her romance with Callum hidden from her parents, but that does not seem like a very Rayla thing to do. She has a shy side, and, as mentioned before, she has a tendency to keep her feelings bottled up, but she is also not the kind of person who would keep something this big hidden from someone she cares about so much. Why should she, especially considering she has grown so much? Maybe the person Rayla was at the start of the series would have kept this a secret, but the person Rayla was at the start of the series would never have been with a human in the first place. She would have kept her affections hidden, even from herself, but she is a stronger person now. She's not the kind of person who would lie about who she loves in order to please her parents. Especially since her parents have not been much of a presence in her life thus far. If they disapprove at first, but Rayla's persistence wins them over, and they accept her relationship with Callum, it would be as cathartic of a victory as any triumph over Viren or Erevas. The Dragon Prince keeps returning to two topics, the relationships between parents and children, and the struggles of overcoming prejudice. I don't believe the show would reject an opportunity to tie these two struggles together in the form of the relationship between Rayla and her parents. Or they could just do something silly and cheap, and not have Rayla free her parents until the very, very end of the series, depriving the show of the opportunity to examine her complicated feelings toward them, and the complicated ways in which she would react to seeing them, and how they would respond to her being in a relationship with a human. But the Dragon Prince is, as a whole, too smart, too challenging, and too evocative to not do something interesting and satisfying with Rayla finally seeing her parents whenever that happens. And I swear, it will happen sooner rather than later. So thank you all for watching. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Donate to my Patreon if you can, and you want to see more videos like this. Keep watching The Dragon Prince. It is a fascinating show that is only getting better with time. I can't wait to see where it goes from here. Season 4, if Netflix does in fact give it a fourth season, has the potential to be the show's best season yet. So tune in soon for my next analysis. It'll be coming soon, I promise you that. Thank you all again. Adios, comrades.